In the last video, we've learned about the deposit creation process. When there are excess reserves held by banks, the banks can lend these excess reserves out to create more deposits as well as money supply. However, it may not be possible to create more deposits or to increase money supply in some situations. The amount of bank deposits will drop when citizens draw out their deposits or when the central bank raises the legal reserve ratio. This is called deposit contraction. Let's go over the process of deposit contraction next. Similar to deposit creation, there are several assumptions while calculating deposit contraction. They are 1. The banking system adopts fractional reserve system. 2. Banks would not hold excess reserves. 3. No other cash inflow. We're now going to see an example. Assume that the legal reserve ratio is 20% and there are $1,000 reserves, $4,000 lendings, and $5,000 deposits within the banking system. In other words, there are no excess reserves in this banking system. If someone draws $200 from Bank A, then the reserves and deposits held by Bank A will immediately decrease by $200. Reserve, $800. Lending, $4,000. Deposit, $4,800. As the legal reserve ratio is 20%, Bank A must have reserves of $4,800 times 20%, which equals $960. Yet Bank A is only holding $800, therefore its actual reserves are lower than the legal reserve requirement. In this situation, Bank A has insufficient reserves. It would need $160 more to satisfy the reserve requirement. In order to fulfill the legal requirement, Bank A has to call back certain loans. Bank A has to call back $160 lendings to meet the legal requirement on reserves. Now, let's assume people will withdraw deposits from Bank B to repay their loans to Bank A. As a result, the reserves and deposits held by Bank B will drop by $160. Assume that Bank B doesn't hold any excess reserves as well. Bank B will also suffer insufficient reserve when people withdraw their deposits. Similar to Bank A, Bank B will need to call back some loans to meet the legal reserve requirement, and then other people will withdraw money from other banks to repay such loans. This process will be repeated again and again until there's no more insufficient reserve in the whole banking system. We can see that both deposits and money supply have been decreased during this process. That's what we call deposit contraction. So let's see how much deposits will remain in the banking system after this deposits contraction process. In the beginning, someone took away $200 deposits. Only $800 reserves remained within the banking system. Therefore, the maximum possible amount of deposits will be maximum possible amount of deposits equals reserves times 1 divided by legal reserve ratio. 4,000 equals 800 times 1 divided by 20%, which equals to $4,000. Compared to the starting amount of deposits of $5,000, the amount of deposits within the whole banking system has decreased by $1,000. We've also mentioned that deposit contraction will also cause a decrease in the money supply of the economy in this situation. So how much is the decrease exactly? When the public withdraws $200, cash held by the public increases by $200. However, the total amount of deposits has dropped by $1,000 after deposit contraction. Therefore, there is a decrease of $800 in the overall money supply change in money supply equals change in cash held by the public plus change in deposits. Negative 800 equals 200 plus negative 1000. After discussing various topics about money supply, let's move on to talk about what money demand is in the next video.